again from Carrollton, Texas. This is Cruise Man on the 2018. Just out for a morning ride. It's really a pretty nice day. It's going to rain a little later. It's cloudy, cool, uh, cool for here. It's about 85 degrees and not quite as humid as it has been, which humidity is the real killer around here. It's usually about 70 or 80 percent. Today it's about 45 percent. So pretty nice day for a ride. I'm trying out a new audio system. I actually have a lavalier microphone taped to the inside of my flip face helmet and it's just wired directly into the GoPro. So I'm anxious to see how this mic setup works compared to the uh, Cena backpack. Now the reason I have this instead of the Cena backpack is because I'm doing some real world field testing on a Cardo Pack Talk Bold system. And it is a uh, Bluetooth headset similar in design, similar in function to the Cena 20S. And I will be doing a comparative review of those headsets here in the next, uh, oh, probably the next couple of weeks. Got some really exciting uh, news to share from the YouTube channel. Um, this last week we surpassed 10,000 subscribers. That's a big, uh, big milestone for the YouTube channel. Not many YouTube channels out there, especially in the motorsports world, have 10,000 subscribers. So, and we're already on our way to 11,000. So that's very exciting. Appreciate all of you who have subscribed and all of you who post comments on the videos. Much appreciated. Also this week, I completed and posted a video showing how to install a Rivco trailer hitch on the 2018 Goldwing. You know, with the reduced luggage capacity of the Goldwing, a trailer is really almost a necessity if you're going to do any long distance touring. We've used a Bush Tech trailer for years. And um, anytime I go somewhere for more than just a couple of days or a few days, I usually hook up the trailer because it really is pretty easy to use. And it holds a ton of stuff. You'll never run out of room if you're pulling a trailer. And you'll be amazed at how easy it is to pull a trailer behind your bike. They're, they track very easily and they do affect your braking. They affect your acceleration, of course. But um, the Goldwing is really well suited for pulling a trailer. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a trailer tips video coming soon. Just some tips on if you're pulling a trailer, what you should do, and just some helpful tips. In fact, if you have any helpful tips or photos of you with your trailer and you submit a tip, uh, something that you do that makes trailering more fun or safer or whatever, email them to me at info at cruisemansgarage.com and uh, maybe I'll include it in the video, include your picture and give you credit for the tip. Maybe you know how to do something that I've never done before. Another video I just shot a couple days ago, haven't put it on the YouTube channel yet, I've still got to get it edited, and that is the installation of a lid lock helmet lock really neat idea. I saw this on the GL forum. One of our members had installed one, so I reached out to Lidlocks. And uh, so in the next few days, you'll see a video out there. It's a good alternative for guys that own a 2018. Actually, it, it works with just about any motorcycle. Installs on the end of your handlebar. And it's a great alternate way to secure your helmet when you get off the bike. Much better than the stupid helmet lock that Honda provides on the 2018. So watch for that. Of course, I already mentioned I'll be doing the Cardo Cena comparison 
I actually like this Cardo headset. It's a little bit smaller. The profile is a little thinner than the Cena, so it, I think it makes it, I think it fits a little better into the trunk of the 2018 just because it's a little bit thinner. Another video I'm considering, I'm not exactly sure how to do it. Maybe I'll just talk about it on this uh, vlog. But I came across what could be a safety issue with the new Goldwing. And this pertains, I think, pertains to those of you that have the 2018 Goldwing with a DCT transmission. It may also apply if you have a manual transmission, but I think it's less likely to apply. And what I think causes the situation is the combination of the DCT transmission with this ride-by-wire throttle, which is very sensitive. The DCT does take a little getting used to in any riding condition, but I had a situation a couple of weeks ago that scared the hell out of me. I pulled into my driveway, and when I pull into my driveway, I have to make a 90-degree turn because my, my uh, garage faces 90 degrees from the where you go into the driveway. So I'm, it's, you know, it's like a swing driveway. So I, I make the 90-degree turn, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what I did, but all of a sudden, the bike just lurched unexpectedly. And I think it was somehow, I guess I hit the throttle unexpectedly. And when you do that at low speed, the bike can really, especially if it's changing gears and downshifts into first or something. I'm not, I'm, again, I don't know what happened. I just noticed this unexpected lunge and I barely recovered from it. Um, I thought the bike was actually going to get away from me at one point. I was able to recover control of the bike, but I'll tell you what, it scared the hell out of me. And it's happened one other time, and both times it happened when I was coming to a stop. So if any of you out there with a DCT transmission have experienced that, put it down below in the comments. Um, I think Basically, it's an awareness that you have to just be aware that this ride-by-wire throttle, it's a switch. It's not like the old throttle with a cable. And it's either on or off. So when you turn that throttle, the uh, throttle response can be very abrupt, especially if you're in sport mode. But I was actually in the econ mode when this happened, which is one of the least responsive modes. And I uh, just think it's worth mentioning that if you have a DCT transmission, you should be very aware when you come to a stop or when you're slowly turning like in a parking space or to go into your garage or something like that, I'm not sure if maybe I applied the front brake and when I did, I, my wrist kind of went down and tipped that throttle and it lunged. I just don't know what happened. So again, it's hard for me to make a video about it because I don't really know how to reproduce the problem. I've tried. I've even tried in a parking lot to reproduce the problem and I haven't been able to do it. So I did something that caused that throttle to open up and the bike just lurched. And when you're not expecting it at a slow speed, I'll tell you what, it can be pretty, uh, pretty exciting to say the least. So anyway, a lot of good things happening at Cruise Man's Garage. Lots of new videos coming up. I appreciate you guys subscribing. I appreciate your comments. I try to respond to your questions whenever possible. I said I was going to do a YouTube Live or Facebook Live when I hit 10,000 subscribers. And uh, I, I still haven't quite figured that out yet. But it is something I want to try. I want to give it a try because I'd like to be able to do it from Wingding. I'd like to be able to do a, a YouTube Live uh, while we're out at Wingding. Maybe with some of the guys we meet out there. 
and I'll be uh, posting more information in the weeks ahead on maybe places we could all meet up during wingding and uh, maybe meet for lunch or go do something maybe go to the dragon I need to ride the dragon on this new bike because I want to get some pictures of it so I've got a lot more motorcycle history to tell you about my early days of motorcycling and how it kind of morphed into becoming a Goldwing rider. And I'm going to do that in my next moto vlog. I've also been testing out this econ mode for the last, I'd say, five or six tankfuls of gas. I've been uh, pretty much exclusively using econ mode. I want to do some comparisons on does it actually increase your mileage uh, and I want to know and I think it does I'm averaging probably 41 to 42 miles per gallon I'll know the real numbers and I'll post the real numbers I'm gonna do a video just on econ mode and the different ride modes I know that at 40 miles an hour uh, you're in seventh gear where in tour mode you don't hit seventh gear till about 50 or maybe even 53 miles an hour so if you're riding around town as I'm doing now where I never really get above 45 miles an hour uh, econ mode can probably make a pretty big difference now it's sluggish as hell I'll tell you that right now uh, you don't have the throttle response you're in fifth gear by the time you're at 30 miles an hour maybe even sixth gear so it shifts very rapidly but um, it does seem to improve the mileage you know this engine has so much torque that you know you've got pretty much flat torque curve from 1500 rpm all the way up to whatever the maximum torque rpm is I mean, it pretty much starts at about 14, 1500 RPM. So this bike can idle, not idle, but it can cruise very uh, comfortably at 1500 RPM and still have torque available if you need. So econ mode is something that I bet a lot of you haven't even tried yet, but it, it does actually uh, improve your gas mileage. Not sure if you can see my screen, but the computer's telling me it's 44.7 miles per gallon. Now, the computer on my bike is very, very liberal. It's usually one and a half to two gallons, miles per gallon, uh, higher than what my actual mileage is. And I track the mileage very carefully using an app on my phone. But my actual results come out to more somewhere in the area of 41 to 42 miles per gallon. But I'll show you those comparisons when I do that video. But anyway, that's all for now. It's a beautiful cloudy day, cool, nice breeze here in Carrollton, Texas. I want to remind all of you to ride safe, wear your gear when you ride, and I'll talk to you next time.